Welcome back. In this video, we shall finish chapter 3 by moving to section 3.4 about compactness and uniform continuity. Okay, we started studying uniform continuity last year in M1106 for, of course, functions between R and R, but we can generalize this condition to maps between metric spaces. So, we say that a function between two metric spaces x and y is uniformly continuous if for every epsilon positive we can find a positive number delta such that whenever the distance between x and y is less than delta then the distance between their images is less than epsilon okay and now the order of the quantifiers is very very important because the condition of continuity means continuity at every point the delta depends on epsilon and x usually. But if delta is in, depends only on epsilon and not on x, then you have uniform continuity. So this is why you call it. So the same delta works for all x. Okay. And of course, we, instead of less than, strict less than delta, we can write less or equal than delta. And instead of less than epsilon, we can write less or e equal to epsilon, as you may know. Right? Because if it's less or equal than epsilon, it's less than strictly than two epsilon. Okay. So if you prove that this is true for two epsilon or one hundred epsilon, it's the same thing because epsilon was arbitrary. Okay. So let us give an example of so a uniformly continuous function is of course continuous, but the converse is not true. And here's an example: if you consider the function one over x on the interval zero one open at zero. We know that f is continuous, but it's not uniformly continuous. So we have to negate the condition of uniform continuity. So pick a number delta positive and take x to be delta over 1 plus delta square and y to be the 2 times x. Then x is, of course, between 0 and 1 because delta is less than 1 plus delta 2 and also y is uh, less or equal than 1 at positive. And the distance between two, the two is actually delta over 1 plus delta square and this is less than delta because we are dividing by something bigger than 1. Therefore, uh, if we compute 1 over x minus 1 over y, we'll see that it's equal to 1 plus delta square over 2 delta. Okay, And this is something bigger or equal than 1, Okay, because 1 plus delta square is always bigger than 2 delta. So we found an epsilon, which is equal to 1, such that for any number delta, we, uh, we, we can find two elements, x and y, whose distance is less than delta, but the distance between their images is bigger or equal than epsilon, which is 1 in this case. So, therefore, this function is not uniformly continuous. The function sine, however, is uniformly continuous, as you know. Why? Because of this fundamental inequality, sine x minus sine y in absolute value is less than absolute value of x minus y. So in this case, you can take delta equal epsilon on the condition of uniform continuity. Okay? How to prove that? There are several ways. Either you factor this, you can write it as 2 cosine sine, and you use the fact that sine and cosine okay, is less than 1, or you can use the mean value theorem, because the derivative of sine is cosine, so it's less than 1. Okay, So this is what we call a Lipschitz continuous function. Okay, and... We can give other examples, of course, but let us give, so as an exercise to test your understanding, prove that the uniform continuity condition is equivalent to this condition. Whenever we have two sequences whose distance tends to zero, then the distance between their images tend to zero. Okay, prove that to test your understanding. So therefore, to prove that a function is not uniformly continuous, it's enough to find two sequences whose distance tends to zero, but that who, such that the distance between their images does not tend to zero. Okay? You can use this actually to prove that the map x squared is not uniformly continuous on R, and sine x squared is also not uniformly continuous on R. Okay? However, if we restrict these functions to a compact subset of R, they then they become uniformly continuous, because this is the, the main theorem of this section that states that if the source space is compact, any continuous map is uniformly continuous. Okay? And I will present two proofs of this important fact. Uh, the first uh, proof uh, relies on the Lebeg number uh, lemma. And the second one uses sequential continuity, sequential compactness. So 
uh, let us cover the space uh, Y with balls of center of variable center B and radius epsilon over 2. Okay? So if the union of all these balls as B varies in Y is just Y. Okay, now Y is not compact, so I cannot say that, but I consider the inverse image of this covering. So I consider since F is continuous and this ball is open, the inverse image is an open set. And it's easy to check that the union of all of these sets as B varies in Y is equal to X. Okay. Just uh, write it. And now since X is compact, it has a Lebesgue big number uh, delta. Okay. So, so this means that any set of diameter less than delta is contained in one element of this covering. So pick two points, x and y, whose distance is less than delta. Then the set just consisting of two points, x and y, has diameter less than delta. And therefore, it's contained in one of these sets. So there exists b in y such that x, y is contained in f minus 1 of this ball. What does this mean? It means that f of x and f of y all belong to the ball of center B and radius epsilon over 2. So this means that the distance between f of x and b is less than epsilon over 2, and the distance between f of y and f of b is also less than epsilon over 2. So by the triangle inequality, the distance between f of x and f of y is less than epsilon. Okay. So we found a number delta such that whenever the x, y is less than delta, then the distance between the images is less than epsilon. And this is just uniform continuity. Okay, so this is the first proof. The second proof relies on the sequential compactness of X, and it constitutes a typical and standard reasoning and analysis. When we want to prove something, we reason by contradiction, and we construct two sequences, and then we get a contradiction. So suppose that F is not uniformly continuous. So therefore, there exists an, an epsilon positive, epsilon zero positive, such that for every delta, we can find two points x and y whose distance is less than delta, but the distance between their images is bigger or equal than epsilon zero. There's no equal sign here. So in particular, since delta is arbitrary, we can take delta equal one, then one half, then one third, and so on. Or any sequence converging to zero doesn't matter. For each such choice of delta, we can find an element. So xn and two elements xn and yn. So whose distance is less than one over n, but the distance between their images, so this is xn and yn, is bigger or equal than epsilon zero. And now, since x is compact, it is sequentially compact. So xn has a conversion subsequence xnk that converts to some point x. It follows that the n, y and k also converges to x because by the triangle inequality, the distance between y and k and x is less or equal than the distance between y and k and x and k plus the distance between x and k and x. The first term by construction is less than 1 over n k, and the second term tends to 0. So as k tends to infinity, this tends to 0, therefore this tends to 0. And so not only x and k converges to, to x, but also y and k converges to x. Now, since f is continuous, it is sequentially continuous. So the image under f of x and k converges to f of x, and the image of y and k under f converges to f of x. Okay. Therefore, by the triangle inequality, the distance between f x and k and, and f y and k tends to zero. Okay. But this contradicts this inequality. X, this is x and or can put x and k. Okay. So this is a typical reasoning that we should. Uh, really master to do. So this concludes the second proof of the Uniform Continuity Theorem and therefore the video and the whole chapter 3 about compactness. So I know it may be difficult for you for the first time, but I advise you to um, see uh, the video several times and do the exercises, check the details. And if you have questions, don't hesitate to let me know. So Thank you for your attention and see you next time.